Hi, this is Eric White. Today I'm going to present a little project that I've been meaning to do for some time, which is to show how to use a streaming approach to write a spreadsheet that has, say, one million rows. There are a fair number of open source projects out there that show how to write spreadsheet ML, how to create a spreadsheet, how to set values in the various cells. However, this is a project with a little bit of a difference in that it uses a streaming approach that enables you to write a spreadsheet with a million rows. The problem isn't so much one of speed of reading and writing. The problem is one of working set. If you're going to create a spreadsheet with a million rows in it, and you're going to create that in memory, either you're creating that in memory by reading it from some data source, or you may be creating it in memory by reading it from a spreadsheet with that many rows. In fact, if you have an average number of columns, say 8 or 10 or 12 columns, a 1 million row spreadsheet will have in excess of 20 million elements in it. It simply is too many elements, it overloads the heap in a .NET application. You can't allocate that much memory. It plays havoc with the garbage collector. In contrast, when working with word processing ML, the largest document I've ever worked with is the OpenXML standard itself, which is on the order of 6,000 pages in a single document. And that document had 2 million elements in the main document part. We're comparing a very, very large word processing document, which has 2 million elements in the main document part, to a spreadsheet with a million rows, which has in excess of 20 million elements in the worksheet. And if it has a larger number of columns, that number might go up to 40 or 50 or 60 million. It simply doesn't work to use anything other than a streaming approach to work with spreadsheets of that size. To facilitate this approach, I've written a very, very small library. It's on the order of 700 or 800 lines of code that enable you to write out a spreadsheet. This code enables you to write out a workbook with multiple worksheets in that workbook. You can decide whether the workbook is ordinary cells or whether it comprises a table in OpenXML spreadsheet ML parlance. I'll show you what I mean by that. You can do certain types of formatting such as deciding whether the cell is bolded or what the number format is for the cell. In addition, you can set justification on the cell. While the formatting facilities of this little library are not great. These formatting facilities are sufficient for the main scenario for this code, which is to write out a worksheet with hundreds of thousands or even millions of rows. When writing out a worksheet with hundreds of thousands or millions of rows, typically you're writing out raw data and you want to use that data in some fashion. You want to perhaps create pivot tables on that data. You may want to use other analysis tools to analyze the data. To introduce this little library, first I'm going to show the Hello World application. One point about this code is that this code is going to become part of the Power Tools for OpenXML project. Eventually, we're going to wrap this code in a PowerShell commandlet, and you can use this PowerShell commandlet to create a workbook and a worksheet with a million rows in it. In this namespace, openxmlpowertools.spreadsheetwriter, there are a number of different classes that I've defined. These classes are very simple. They're mainly classes that you use to define the data that is going to go into the spreadsheet. For instance, there's a workbook class, and in the workbook class, there's a worksheets property. And this worksheets property, you can initialize to any I innumerable of worksheets. In this particular case, I'm initializing that worksheets 
property to an array of worksheet, which is in fact an IE enumerable of worksheet. That's what arrays are. Arrays do implement that interface. And then within there, I initialize the data for each worksheet. And in this particular example, the example only creates a single worksheet. The name of the worksheet is my first sheet. I've defined column headings for this sheet. The column headings are name and age. I've made these column headings bold. This is an example of the rudimentary formatting that I enable in this little library. And then you specify an I enumerable of row. You set this rows property of the worksheet to some I enumerable of row. And in this particular case, it's an array of row. And in this array of row, I initialize two rows. One row contains two cells. In this first row, the name is Eric, and the value is 50. And in the second row, the name is Bob, and the value is 42. After defining the data in this fashion, you then call spreadsheetwriter.write, passing in the name of the XLSX and passing in this workbook variable. That then writes the spreadsheet. It's pretty simple. Let's run the example. Let's open test1.xlsx. And in fact, we can there see the data that we put into that workbook and worksheet. But one thing I can see immediately is I'd really rather have that age be right justified so that age column heading is lined up with the numbers that are below it. So I'll come here into the definition of those column headings and I'll set horizontal cell alignment is equal to horizontal cell alignment dot right and run it again and look at that workbook again and in fact you can see that the age column heading is now right justified. Now let's go through the exercise of adding a new column to this worksheet and we'll put a little bit of numeric formatting on this new column. First thing I'm going to do is copy and paste that last cell in the heading and I'm going to make this new column be rate. Having this column heading be right justified is the correct thing. I'm going to insert a new cell into this row. And in this particular case I'll say that the rate is 45 and I'll go ahead and make that be a decimal rates often are in decimal. I might even make it 45.00 to make it very clear that this is a decimal value. And further, I can now put in a format code of 0, 0.00. These format codes are the standard Excel format codes that you can use for formatting any cell. I'll show you before the end of this video where you can find more documentation on all of the format codes that you can use. I'll copy that cell and I'll paste it down here. Bob has a little bit more experience so his rate is $78 an hour. So now let's run that example. Control F5. It runs. I'll open the spreadsheet and in fact we can see we've added the new column and the formatting is set appropriately. When setting up cells, whether the cells are in the column headings or whether the cells are in rows in the worksheet, you can specify the data type for those cells. The sets of data types that you can use for a cell are boolean, date, number, and string. This little library to write Excel spreadsheets doesn't deal with formulas. That's a project for another day. It also doesn't deal with rich text in cells. Further, when you set this value for the cell, the value property is actually an object. Let's go take a look at the cell class. Here is the cell class. You can see that the value property is an object. 
what this means is you can set that value property to a date time. You can set that value property to a string. You can set that value property to any of the scalar data types such as int, double, float, decimal, and so on. You can also set that value property to a Boolean. If you use any of the various numeric data types such as int, float, double, or decimal, you specify the cell data type of number. Excel doesn't have a distinction of all of these other data types. You just say it's a number. And as I showed you, you can set the horizontal cell alignment. You can indicate whether the cell is bold or italic, and you can specify the format code to be applied to that cell. For those format codes, you can visit this page on office.microsoft.com. This page contains all of the format codes that you can use. For instance, you can see how to display a thousand separator. You can use pound, comma, pound, pound, pound. You can find out how to include decimal places and significant digits. Here are the various format codes that you can use to get the results that you want to achieve. When displaying a date, you have a whole wide variety of ways that you can format dates. You can find this page at this bit.ly address. The next thing I'm going to show you is I'm going to show you this at scale. I showed you the Hello World version of this application. In the example program.cs that I provide in the zip file that you can download in the blog post associated with this video, there is a test here, test 3, and this test 3 enables you to define this small data variable. This data variable is an array of anonymous types, and in this array of anonymous types there are a number of properties. You can specify the sheet name. You can specify the number of columns. You can specify the number of rows. And then there's a little bit of code here that randomly streams data into the workbook variable that you use when you call spreadsheetwriter.write. This will have a performance profile that is very similar to the performance profile that you would have if, for instance, you made a streaming reader of some huge text file and streamed that huge text file into this little library. As I mentioned before, when you define a worksheet, you specify this property in the worksheet class, this I enumerable of row. And when you specify this I enumerable of row, it doesn't mean that you have to specify an array or a list, which would be something that would be completely in memory. Instead, you can specify something that is, in fact, streaming. In this particular case, in this example, it's a stream of random data. But in a real world situation, you would create a streaming reader of a text file or a streaming reader of a SQL database or whatever you have as a data source. In this particular case, it creates the first sheet with 8 columns and 300,000 rows, the second sheet with 12 columns and 2,000 rows, and the third sheet with 10 columns and 20 rows. In the Spreadsheet Writer module, at the top of the Spreadsheet Writer module, there is a pound sign define of this symbol, Display Working Set. And if you set this symbol, then if you look down here in the code for Display Working Set, what you can see is that based on some interval, in this particular case the interval is 10,000 rows, it's going to display the working set of the application. What this means is every 10,000 rows, it's going to tell us the size of the heap. Let's run this example that uses random data and generates a worksheet with 300,000 rows. I'll press Control F5. As 
And you can see it's moving quite nicely. It's generating well more than 10,000 rows per second, and it finished very quickly. I'll press Enter. Here we can see test3.xlsx, which the example just created. It's 25 meg in size. That's a good size workbook, but not at all out of the question for people who deal with very large workbooks. Let's open it. You can see for large workbooks, Excel displays a progress status. And here's the workbook with random data. If I press control down, you can see, in fact, this huge sheet does have 300,000 rows. If I go to my huge sheet, I press control down arrow, and you can see, in fact, that this worksheet does have 2,000 rows, and the third worksheet does have 20 rows of data. One more small point about this example. Excel has this capability where you can select a range of data in a worksheet, and you can tell it that you want to insert a table, and Excel asks, where is the data for your table? And you can tell it the range for the table. And you can indicate whether the table has headers or not. And when you click OK, then the table looks something like this. A table in Excel has slightly different behavior than ordinary cells. So for instance, here I can press Tab, and it gives me a new row. And I can say, Jim is 35 and he makes $55 an hour and Cindy she is 29 and she makes $99 an hour and as part of a standard behavior of a table you can for instance tell it you want to sort A to Z on the name or you can sort smallest to largest on the age or you can sort largest to smallest on the rate this is all standard functionality that you get when you create a table in a workbook. This small library enables you to do that. And let me show you how. I'll go up to this first example. I'll tell it the table name is names and rates. And with tables, it always puts that drop-down button to the right of the heading. So it's actually desirable for all the headings in a table to always be left justified. So I'll make that left justified, and I'll make this left justified. And just by specifying this table name, this will cause this little library to create that as a table as opposed to just ordinary cells in a worksheet. I'll run it. We'll open the workbook and worksheet and in fact you can see it has created that as a table and those column headings are aligned as I specified. In the future I am going to dive into this code quite a bit more one of the interesting things about this code is it shows you exactly how to work with formatting and styles in an Excel spreadsheet. While formatting and styles aren't hard in Excel spreadsheets, there are a few little nuances in how to use them. And to date, there hasn't been anything really good written about using Excel styles and formatting. So I'm going to use this little library as an opportunity to show exactly how to work with formatting in Excel workbooks and worksheets. Well, that's all I'm going to show in this video. Thanks for watching and looking forward to showing you more information about this in the next video.